the Age of Vision radio show with your host, Bonnie Clark. We stand together and accept that we now live in a world transformed by Fukushima. From 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, here on UCY.TV radio, we relentlessly engage every ear that listens. We expose and confront the complete lack of accountability for the nuclear industry. Consider social engineering program to view our bodies, minds, and souls as assets on a balance sheet. We discuss vital current issues, interview activists, and engage our audience in an effort to allow all voices to be heard. The Age of Vision radio show creates a venue that all will choose. We encourage our listeners to reclaim their power and their courage to take action and save our planet from the ravages of greed and indifference. Our actions matter. Every voice matters. We remind our listeners that happiness is resistance. Love is greater than fear. Good morning, UCY.TV radio listeners. This is Lonnie Clark with Age of Fission radio show. Thank you for joining us. Uh, today I have with us, we're putting on a little pre-recorded interview here with Sean McGee from NuclearNews.net. He's one of the editors. And uh, I'm going to get right into it because we have some exclusive news. It's a story that was written by Sean, uh, posted March 29th, 2018, so just a couple of days ago. I have to confess, I had not seen it until right before the show, so I'm going to ask Sean to go through it. The title is called Novichok A234, The Facts, exclusive to NuclearNews.net. So thank you, Sean, for joining us. Oh, it's great to be back again. Uh, so, uh, how are you keeping? Everything all right? Yes, actually, I'm. I'm actually doing quite well. I'm really improving, to be honest. Oh, good stuff. Good yeah, stuff. How about yourself? Uh, well, I've had a, an interesting uh, a few days. I, uh, I put this uh, Novichok article up and got seriously hacked. Really? Um, so, wow. Yeah. Well, as soon as I put it up, uh, the whole computer crashed and went down. Um, and I had to do some fixing on the on because I've got Linux and Ubuntu. I know I had to do a bit of uh, repair work on it to uh, get it working again. And um, by the time I got back online, then basically uh, I, I was all right for about uh, twelve hours, sixteen hours, and <clears throat> I was sharing some um, some research to a peace group, um, uh, you know, sort of based in Ireland. And uh, they turned around. They said, uh, "You know, thanks a lot." And then, uh, and then my computer crashed again. <laughs> I only did a few posts. So, uh, but but I think just before we start, I I, I should point out the you know for uh, you know what's happened in the UK because of this uh, Novichok uh, it, biological attack or chemical attack actually uh, in Salisbury. Um, the, the, the UK is uh, just not saying anything about it at all. Um, so, you know, the, the, when, when uh, Litvinenko was poisoned with polonium-210, uh, of course, they, were, they had pictures of him and it was, you know, uh, uh, it was kind of a big thing. Um, but on this occasion, they, they haven't let anybody go anywhere near no you know to near the actual people there's no pictures like we had of uh uh of uh, litvinenko um so basically it was and that's nearly a decade ago um so when we're coming up to date they've just slapped a, a thing of secrecy on it and of course everybody's wondering oh you know this this uh novichok it must come from ukraine and and 
so what's happened is is that because the uh, the UK has said, oh well, it, it could only have come from Ukraine, uh, from sorry, sorry, not Ukraine. It can only come from Russia. And because of that, of course, they've gone around to all of Europe and, the, of course, the U.S. as well. Obviously, they've got a bee in their bonnet about Russia for some reason. I don't know why. And um, they basically turned around. Well, I do know why. Uh, they basically turned around and uh, they've obviously expelled, what's it, 100, 100 120 or 30 uh, diplomats yeah. from various countries, from 20-odd countries. Yeah. Uh, they actually did one the other day from Ireland. They, they sent one out of Ireland. And we're supposed to be a neutral country. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of people in Ireland that are quite uh, angry about that uh, because there's no evidence being given to people, you know, because uh, you, obviously you would expect uh, the UK to go, look, well, here we've got this this breakdown of the chemical, you know, and it, uh, of course it, every, all these chemicals would have a signature. Um, and well, we'll that's go through what we're that. being told in the States is that that's how they know it's Russia because this chemical has a signature and only Russia has it. Well, actually, that's not what we're told in the UK. What we're told in the UK that it's highly likely, and the rest of Europe as well, by the way, that it's highly likely that it's Russian. And the reason they know that is because it was it was developed in Russia. But... But, and here's the bit that, that people have, haven't discussed, and this is why I did my article. Um, the fact is, is that uh, I, think, I think it was in the uh, 70s, 80s, uh, they turned around and they uh, put, uh, you know, obviously the, uh, Russia fell. Um, and when it did, uh, the scientists that were working on this um, uh, went, you know, I think mainly went to the, the, uh, the went to, where was it? Uh, they went to um, America, and one of the, one of the main guys yeah. that did it went to America, did a book, put the put the chemical chemical equation in the book, and then basically um, you can get that on Amazon, Amazon, um, and you get it on Kindle for about four four euro. It's about five dollars, um, and that's been you know I don't know, I presume it's still still uh, available on Amazon. But it wouldn't matter anyway because you can find the chemical um, composition in other places. And uh, so what I did, I, I thought, well, um, I can't, I, you know, I, I can't afford to buy the Kindle version because I'd have to buy a Kindle book as well. Um, so I just went online and I found a, I, well, I found a blog, basically a forum uh, of wow. chemists who were discussing it, and they were discussing it between uh, when was it? It was two thousand. And six or seven, uh, all the way through to 2012, they had the thread going, you know, um, and they were discussing it, and they were, you know, they were trying to work out, uh, you know, what, what it was, and you know, all the rest of it. And uh, because they were chemists, they were interested in in the science behind it. So um, anyway, I was I was sort of reading through that. Um, they they'd done a lot of deleting of other comments, which were just lots of spam and that. Um, and uh, but I did I, I got through the whole thing, and it was very interesting. And I thought I'd take some notes uh, from that uh, uh, forum. Now I didn't link to it on Nuclear News because I, I just thought, you know, is it with all, it, it, I, I mean, it is still available. And they you can, mean to the forum? Yeah, I did. I didn't link to the forum. Um, uh, so basically, on my my Facebook, there is a link to it, but uh, and I put it there so that Chris Busby and your can Facebook have a look. Pages, Sean yeah. Arclight. <laughs> but uh, anyway, shh, keep it quiet. Oh, we're not um, supposed to so, say that. Sorry, S E A N. <laughs> by the way, yeah, that's well, S E A N Arclight. Yeah, yeah, that's the uh, the the the, Arc, the Facebook version of my uh, name, Sean, as opposed to S H O U N, which is my real name. But uh, anyway, so what we did is, uh, yeah, I went through it and I had a look at it. And I'll, I'll just break down some of the notes. Um, yeah. uh, uh, so what happened was, right, okay. Um, I, I, I broke it down to about seven, seven points. And I had a, an extra point put in because I just wanted to mention the poisoning of Litvinenko about 10 years or so ago. Um, and... Um, well, was, can I uh, ask you a question? Has anybody? Sure. Why was this? If they did it, why? What would be their reasoning? From my understanding, this person was living in England for a long time. 
had yeah. settled into his life as an expat, basically. Yeah, and yeah. He was, he was, he was, no, he, was like, he was, a, he was a spy. He was a, an MI. He was a an British active agent. Active spy. He was an active spy. Uh, but uh, well, I don't know. Well, we you see that this is the, the there's there's all sorts of uh, things going on about you know what he might have been doing recently, but um, he was he was a spy in Russia for about ten years. He's a Russian national, but yeah, he spied for the British. Part, but I thought he was retired, like well, no longer part of the service. Yeah, so to speak, yeah. You know? I, I mean, to, to be honest with you, there's three hundred thousand uh, Russian emigres that live in London. Wow. Um, wow. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, there's, there's people that are on the run from Russia because they've murdered people. I don't think right. there's too many of those. Mm. But, but there's others that have been on the run because they did the dodgy and they got chased out um, <clears throat> when, when Putin did his, uh, you know, trying to uh, sort of, um, well, I mean, basically when, when Russia fell, uh, the Americans went there and they got them to join the IMF and, uh, you know, American, uh, the Americans sort of uh, introduced the neoliberal model, you know, uh, the, the uh, financial model. Um, and uh, what happened, certain people uh, managed to take over. They were, they were, so they'd buy like, I don't know, uh, the, 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 the uh, Gazprom, you know, that, that was bought for, uh, you know, a couple of dollars. Um and uh, there's all those sort of things going on, and the and then you found a very small handful, um, you know, maybe a, a few hundred or a few thousand guys that uh, managed to make an absolute mint, you know, because they were just given these the these neoliberal facts. agenda. That's the model, mission accomplished. Yeah, well, uh, you know, yeah. So yeah, so they were doing that, and then uh, of course you had Yeltsin and you had uh, Gorbachev, so. Um, and, and, and it was, there's a lot of corruption uh, and it was really dodgy, you know, I mean, literally if you were in Russia, you know, you'd have to have bodyguards. Um, so basically what they did is, uh, <clears throat> Putin came along and he, he kind of sorted it out. Um, and, uh, you know, he basically cleared all the, the, uh, the sort of, um, uh, the, the, uh, unfairness and disparage. I mean, there was a guy that went around Russia. Um, uh, at the time and he was doing a book and he was going into all the towns um, and he said like he'd walk into a town and just people would be totally broke and you know they'd be getting a bit of money and they'd just buy buy a load of vodka and you know you go to these towns and uh, yeah. they were basically I drunk, drunk skunks yeah. you know that uh, he was just track, tracking around on a motorbike um, and he, he said like the people and he was with a friend and he said people would just be so drunk and, you know, there, there, there was a real, you know, there was, uh, they had hardly any food and it, it was, you know, it was, they were, oh, oh, hang on. They were living off uh, potatoes and all the rest of it. And um, so it was, it was really kind of bad times. Um, anyway, so when Putin came along or around about that time, uh, they started uh, going after uh, after people that were sort of... Uh, the uh, riffraff, yeah. Yeah, all the mafia sort of guys that, you know, and, and you know, you can't blame the Russians. They, you know, they, they were just trying to uh, survive, you know. It was, it was quite a, a terrible time for them, you know. And, uh, and then, you know, people people were relying on the state, you know, because it was a communist country, and then that was just pulled out from under them. And then they just had to somehow survive, you know. And um, so this guy was going around. Um, I actually met him. And he said he was going around. He said it was it was dire. It was really, really, really dire. And um, <clears throat> so, basically, Putin came along, started getting things organised a bit more, you know. And um, you know, the, the, obviously, a lot of the guys that were doing dodgy stuff, some of the mafia guys that were being a bit outrageous, they ended up they made a lot of money, and then they thought, right, we'll get out of Russia. And they all came to London, you know, because at the end of the day, London was uh, was an easy place to take dirty money to. Oh, yeah, okay, I get that. And, yeah. and, and in fact, actually, there was uh, about two days ago, there was, um, there was a, um, what they call it, a foreign affairs committee. Um, <laughs> and it was quite funny, actually, because I actually watched it. It was about two hours worth. And they were sitting there. And they were going, well, um, these, this, all this money coming in, you know, um, did, did, did we just sort of turn a blind eye to it? 
And they said, well, basically, no, you know, yeah, we did. We did. We, well, we sort of kind of encouraged no, it. Yes, 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 we did, actually. Yeah. <laughs> we want to we say sort of, no, but we really did. <laughs> yeah. And, um, wow. you know, we, 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 we encouraged it. And, in fact, actually, they were saying, that, um, you know, as, as of a, a, a couple of days ago, uh, they were saying that there was still money coming in from Russia for up to, um, uh, uh, they reckoned it was a, a billion uh, billion pounds a month. Wow. So, you know, just over a billion or whatever. Um, so that, that was coming in every month uh, without fail. And uh, as the money came in, you know, the bank, the, the city of London would pull it, put it in. Um, you know, there's a lot of people making a lot of money off it. Um, and uh, and in fact, actually, you know, uh, politicians were getting uh, uh, looked after by these very wealthy Russians, um, and there wasn't a problem, you know. Um, so, uh, but but that was quite an interesting meeting, you know. It was actually called the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, and it was on about Russian corruption. <laughs> but but they had um, they had uh, I think it was uh, three investigative journalists and uh, an ex banker. Who uh, who basically were sort of saying, well, you know, <clears throat> we have to, we, we should stop this. But then they said, well, what happens if we do stop it? What will happen in the UK? Um, <laughs> and then they changed the subject, um, and uh, and then they were the the investigative journalists were talking about the fact that a couple of um, uh, a couple of people, uh, well, he mentioned mentioned Tory. Uh, politicians but they did say that there were some labor politicians they got the money as well um but they were getting money and and bungs from the the russians uh, living in in the uk um and so so basically uh, they named a couple of names and then the chairman went oh stop that stop that because if it's if they talk about it in the foreign affairs oh, committee wow. it, then the press can go and, and publish right. those names right. now they did they didn't at all yeah. So, so, so it, obviously they clamped down on it. Said, no, you can't talk about this. Wow. And, uh, mm. and they were saying, oh, well, should we, should we, um, should we ban RT? You know, Russia Today. And they said, well, if they do that, then they're just going to kick out all the BBC correspondents we've got in Russia. And of course, I, you know, I suspect that there a lot of those guys are working for MI5 or, or MI6, I should say. Um, and uh, <laughs> so basically, basically they went. Uh, they sort of that 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 line of talk sort of stopped. <laughs> but and, don't, don't uh, you think that that is the natural procession of it, though? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of kind of some of the background to this Novichok story, because now you've yeah. got you know you've got Theresa May and the PR companies right. and the media and all this saying, oh well, it, no, Putin. And they actually said this in the um, in the Foreign Affairs Committee. They said, "Well, look, Putin is like a king, and he he, he gives money." Because they were saying, "Is it is it Putin's money that's in in London, in the England, in the city?" And uh, he didn't really answer that. All he all he said was that, "Well, no, Putin gives people money and he takes it away, depending on on you know." So it's like well, Putin what we has hear all in the, the money. states is that Putin gets a piece of all the money in Russia. Yeah, it's called tax, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, I, 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 at the end of the day, it's um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how he's funded or whatever, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty this sure. This is a really ridiculous thing. I mean, honestly, yeah. they're they're complaining about him acting like a, a king, and look what's happened, at least in mm. our country. It's just so beyond outrageous. It's uh, unbelievable. Mm. Yeah, it's, it, well, I mean, to be honest, it, it, there's a word called xenophobia. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and the problem with xenophobia, you you target one group or whatever. So in this case, it's the Russians, and and it's so easy to expand that. And then you know, I mean, I have to say, you know, we're looking at the the age of McCarthy. I think we've talked about it in the past. Um, and, you know, that seems to be coming back in. Well, that has come back, actually, in, in America, you know, from what I can see. Um, but, <laughs> you know, but this is the thing about it. Like, I am just dumbfounded, John. The common theme here is just the denial. Like, mm. it, I, I don't know. It's like, the, it's not just the xenophobia. It's everything. They expect us to click our heels and say, Sig Heil. I mean, yeah, well, quite frankly, like I, that's like this. 
this this chemical agent like the, reading through your article you know real briefly you said i want to talk about it and i was yeah. like oh my gosh i mean this is this chemical is pretty serious but you're saying that there's no proof that it really is from the russians they're saying it's from the russians but there's really no proof yeah well absolutely i mean uh, uh, I mean, the, the uh, what's it? The uh, Organization for Chemical Weapons, uh, the UN body. Yeah. Um, that they're basically uh, they're, they're basically going to turn around and uh, they're going to they're going to test it. Now it's going to take them three weeks. Now it's um, obviously everybody's saying, well, how how could uh, the UK have uh, know that it was Novichok at such an early stage? Um, and, and I'm going to tell you how they knew because I, I read this forum, you know, and they were talking about uh, issues. Well, it, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go through the eight points that I've got, okay, uh, which are relevant to this discussion. That's I'll just read them out because they're pretty short. Okay, great. Um, and then maybe we can discuss it. But all right. So what this Novichok, what they were saying basically is that um, uh, you, you, it can be as a, in, as a militarized uh, organophosphate. Right now, this is basic organophosphate. This is what they use fertilizer for. So, fertilizer can be used to make explosives, and it can be used also to um, uh, to poison people. So, uh, now the fact is, is that the big ag big agriculture companies, you know, they turn around and they'll they, 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 you know, if we said basically that we're not going to have this product anymore, you know, available to people then that would be kind of neat wouldn't it there would be no i, did, I think one of your uh, buildings got blew up by um by by mcveigh was it and he he used a fertilizer bomb that's was it? right i that's think right. okay well it's the same stuff you know oh, and um okay. so and, and all you've got to do is process it with some chemicals um it, it's a bit tricky you, i think you have to be a what they call a synthetic chemist okay to be able to to create this but it, it sounds like because you get different types. I think it can be made into a gas, um, a fine powder, or into a sticky oil. Now, I think a fine powder one, that, that sort of uh, uh, militarized fine powder, uh, is, is a, is, you know, because they'd have to have nanoparticles. So it'd be really, really hard to synthesize that. Okay. And, um, and it'd be less, it'd be harder to control as well. It sounds like it was put onto a door, door handle or something. And the guys just opened the door handle and, uh, and, and maybe his daughters touched the door handle or, or touched his hand or something, uh, because she's actually seems to be recovering now. Um, and so, so, so you think it's all... just as simple as like putting it on a door handle? Yeah, make yeah, him die. Is he dead? Did he die? Uh, well, there's no, no, uh, no, nothing about him at the moment. His daughter, um, who who also got ill, um, basically she she seems to be recovering. And I, I, heard I think that he uh, was brain dead. He's not a machine, but he's brain dead. Well, they, they they said that about both of them. Yeah. You know, they said they were in a coma, basically. Huh. So. <clears throat> Uh, the, the the bottom line there is is that you know if if he's it, 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 but anyway all of a sudden uh, his, his daughter is uh, it seems to be recovering mm -hmm. so but we'll, we'll come to that anyway so the so anyway I, I suspect it was the oil version and the oil version I would suspect is the easiest one to synthesize you know because because you just you you make it into an oil and then if you want to make it into a fine powder or a gas you have to do other processes yeah. but. Um, Okay, so that's point number one. Uh, point number two is new nuclear, uh, sorry, yeah, new nuclear biological and chemical NBC suits. That, that, so they're, they're, um, uh, they're suits that are worn to stop uh, for chemicals, yeah. They were actually developed before Desert Shield, right? So after the fall of the Russian, uh, sort of the, uh, the Soviet Union, uh, these uh, scientists went to uh, Porton Down in the UK and to America, and uh, that they must have made uh, this um, this particular chemical uh, so that they could test the suits out because they? they had to make new suits because the old this this particular Novichok was basically uh, created to get around the old chemical nuclear chemical and biological warfare suits that they had. They call well, I'm just going to call them noddy suits because that's the sla uh, military slang term for it. 
uh, just a bit easier to say. Um, so the his noddy military suit. slang name was Naughty Suits? No, Noddy. 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 N-O-D-D-Y. N-O-D-D-Y. Noddy. noddy Suits. Why do they call him that? Uh, it's just a slang. There's a few oh. different uh, okay. uh, things okay, that I'll are go called. With it. Okay, I'll Okay. Um, but anyway, so these, so the old ones that were done, you know, prior to the Soviet Union falling, uh, that, that you know, if if there was a chemical, a biological or chemical attack or a nuclear attack, they'd put these suits on, put the mask on, <clears throat> and they um, uh, and they'd have they'd run around, and basically it was, um, uh, you know, it, they'd be protected uh, for a certain period of time, and. Uh, but these, this Novichok, basically, it, it uh, was able to either soak into the suits or get around the suits in some way, um, and it rendered the, and the masks, so it rendered them, um, uh, you know, useless against this particular um, uh, chemical agent. So um, what happened then was that, um, so they, uh, yeah, they developed a new suit, and it was ready by the time of Desert Shield in Iraq. You know the first uh, Iraq War, if you like. So um, anyway, so uh, the, these new new suits that they'd developed by then, they would have had to have Novichok, right, in America and in the UK to be able to test the, the suits out. They'd have had to put somebody in the suit at some point uh, and a mask, stick them in a in a room, and then spray them with this Novichok to see if they would uh, stay alive or not. You don't That's think the they point. would have tested with something similar, like that they had it? Uh, no, it, 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 no, no, because it had to be Novichok, because that, that Novichok was specifically developed to uh, to circumnavigate the uh, the you know the NATO uh, uh, noddy suits at the time. So they they came up with new noddy suits and new gas masks, uh, which were resistant to Novichok. Yeah. So so and that was that that was ready before Desert Shield. So we, we know that the UK and the US had them. Now, I've heard them deny it. I've heard them deny that there was um, uh, that that that, uh, that they, they had any of these tests. They said, oh, we got rid of it in the 80s and all this sort of stuff. We wouldn't have it. But they must yeah. have had it. Yeah. Otherwise, they would, wouldn't have the new suits, you know, and, and these new suits had to be developed before the invasion of Iraq, because you know, from from there, what they were saying that he had chemical agents. So, well, Novichok was the chemical agent, which you could, you know, basically uh, uh, go on uh, Amazon or whatever and buy a book, <laughs> and you you get your uh, Iraqi guys to synthesize this stuff. Now, you know, at the end of the day, that obviously never happened because we, we now know that he didn't have, you know, um, Saddam Hussein didn't have these chemical agents, you know, but, uh, but, but they were saying he did. So they had to prepare for it, you know. And in fact, actually, in, um, in uh, where was it? It was in Kuwait at the time, uh, a battalion of uh, nuclear and biological and chemical warfare specialists, you know, soldiers were sent to Kuwait, right? to protect them, right, from Ukraine. So uh, that's another thing. You know, this is after the fall of the Soviet Union. So that the, the, those guys were working for uh, the uh, alliance, you know, for NATO, basically. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, uh, the next thing that you, you probably want to know is that, uh, <clears throat> obviously, how did they know so quickly that Novichok was basically... Um, uh, was basically a thing, you know. How, how do they know that the scripples were hit with it? Well, the fact is, is that they had uh, they, while they were developing the noddy suits, they were also developing how to test for this chemical. Okay, and um, and then basically, not only did they do that, but they also came up with uh, a treatment for the Novichok. Mm -hmm. So, which kind of makes the point they're saying that because they, they started off initially and they're saying like, oh, twelve people could have been, uh, uh, you know, sort of dozen or so people could, you know, might have been uh, um, uh, contaminated. Well, they weren't, but they might have been. And the report uh, <coughs> was that people were phoning up saying, oh, could it, could it, you know, could I have had it? And they said they said uh, to the hospital and they went in for tests and they didn't have it. Uh, they were advised to get their, their clothes clean just in case, which, you know, is ridiculous. That wouldn't well, get rid of this novelty. For, 
On the note, but Jack, anyway. if you don't think it was the Russians who did it, who did it, and for what reason? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't like to say if it wasn't or was, but I'll, I'll go through a couple of theories as well at the end of this. But anyway, so okay. we, we know, A, uh, so the, the UK at the moment is saying that, um, that, well, not admitting that they could test for it straight away. And they're not saying that they've got any treatment for it straight away, because if they did that, then they'd have to admit that they've got it. Yeah. So they don't want to do that, you know. Anyway, that's a beside the point. Uh, but that was just a little fact that, that came out of the story that I was reading. Anyway, uh, the next thing was um, that it was, uh, yeah, that basically there was an anti, there was very likely that there was a, an antidote was developed. And that was also prior to Desert Shield. So that might explain why the Scribble's daughter and the policeman are recovering. And it may give some hope that, uh, that Mr. Scribble, her father, will also recover. But, you know, so we're not hearing anything. So it sounds to me that the UK is, is ramping up the danger. They, they actually said, the last report I said, is that they said that there could have been up to 200 people at risk. So, you know, the, and this is and, and, and that was how they got all of the European countries to actually uh, chuck out these Russian diplomats. All right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I get saying? you. I mean, the, yeah. it's a clear propaganda program. I mean, it's really obvious. Yeah, it's, it's a strategy. It's a strategy. Anyway, yeah. that's, my, yeah. you know, and, and, it, and to be honest, to be honest, um, you know, it, it, if the Russians did that, well, then the Russians deserve a bit of a tap on the, sh- uh, the the wrist for doing it. It's very dodgy to do that, um, you know. But if it wasn't, then whoa, dear, <laughs> you know. But well, we'll you know, we, hopefully we may find out. Anyway, the next point was that uh, they basically turned around. Uh, oh, yeah, that, I'd already made this point actually that. Um, that the uh, that making all references to Novichok's theory is a matter of national security. Right. Uh, right. That that they that they wouldn't basically have to give any information of, of any technical detail. It's a yeah, secret. and then they say, look, here's the OPCW, and you're going to take three weeks to come up with your report, or even a couple of months. They've started saying now, which is ridiculous because they knew within days by you doing this test. But obviously, to find out how, the exact chemical composition. To, to track where it came from mm-hmm. might take mm-hmm. a few months. Well, but I don't think so. I think it would take a couple of weeks. They'd, they'd have a, a pretty good idea. Uh, be, uh, and I'll come come back to that in a minute. Um, so anyway, uh, then basically there was, uh, there was, I think there was 70 to 90 uh, Russian peer-reviewed studies before the fall of the uh, Soviet Union. And uh, they, they, what they did is that they didn't say, oh, we've got this, uh, you know, uh, militarized organophosphate. What they said is that they've got organophosphate um, in the peer reviewed studies. Um, and they were saying it was a fertilizer or an insecticide or whatever, you know. And then uh, the seventh what the seventh point I brought in was uh, uh, <clears throat> that they, they've that it isn't easy to make. So you've got uh, I think it was. Um, uh, sodium uh, dioxide, uh, and I, th- I think that's quite reactive and nasty, you know. And there's other bits that are quite reactive and nasty that you add to this uh, potash, uh, mm-hmm. basically, uh, and what have you. Uh, and basically, uh, it, it, you would have to have a synthetic chemist who knows what he's doing in a lab to do it. But but you know that's any synthetic chemist worth his salt, uh, and uh, in a lab that's uh, designed for synthetic chemistry. You know, uh, which there is loads of. Um, well, on this so, story, I have heard repeatedly that only the Russians have it, and only the Russians know how to make it. That's the news I've heard. According to this this uh, this forum uh, in two thousand, mm-hmm. between the uh, which, which they were discussing this between two thousand and seven, I think roughly, uh, to two thousand and twelve, the when was the last post. Um, they were discussing it then. And they were they were talking about all the things that I've just talked about, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. so that's how I know what I know. So um, anyway, the, the the last point, um, which you know, because they, they also say, well, you know, they've done it before, and this guy Litvin Yanko, he was he was uh, poisoned with polonium two ten, mm-hmm. and um, 
And then basically, uh, you know, that could only be produced in Russia, you know, and it's really rare. That's, you know, polonium-210, you know, that's the, <laughs> it's not that rare. But um, I was talking with Chris Busby, who's saying, well, you just get some radium tubes and dials and stuff and you mash them all down, do some chemical stuff, and you, yeah, you get enough uh, polonium-210 to kill someone, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but there is another theory to that, and we can discuss that as well. But, uh, but, but the bottom line is, though, is that, you know, once again... And, and the other thing was, though, that um, the... Um, uh, the chemical uh, um, uh, analysis of the pluten- polonium-210 that poisoned Litvinenko was never released. You know, if you want to go on the internet and try and find it, you won't find it. And, of course, why not? You know, because at the end of the day, it's not it's not like that we don't know what polonium-210 is, you know. Um, but what we'd want to know is what, what, uh, what other bits are with that polonium-210 right. that might let us know where it's from. Yeah. You know? Um, well, and, Sean, don't and, you think there's just a general disregard for all the nuclear contamination? Like, it's just a well, general across the board. You know, maybe we'll. The studies are coming out. Like, honestly, we don't need more studies. We need them to actually put some science into stopping it or remediating yeah. it or. Like it just well, I, I mean, at the end of the day, there, there was the, there was another case of polonium two hundred and ten poisoning, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't uh, uh, wasn't Russia, and that was actually uh, who was it? Oh, what's that? Um, the famous Palestinian, you know, the guy I'm on about. I think everybody out there and you know, they yes. were screaming yes. into the into the YouTube's, uh, but uh, oh, it'll come to me anyway. But uh, anyway, so the, the leader of the um, uh, Palestinian, the PLO, um, when he died, it was suspected that he had uh, polonium uh, poisoning. Yes, and, uh, and it, his anyway, body and found it there. Well, you see, that, that there was a huge, big thing about that. And then they were saying, oh, no, that's not right. And there was big delays to get it done. And, of course, we all know that these things break down, and, you know. So um, the bottom line was... Arafat, you know, his name was Arafat. They, Arafat, yeah. So they've got their their half lots. Yeah, yeah, Yasser, yeah. I actually remembered it uh, before I found the name. Right right when I clicked on it, I found it. But yeah. uh, So this is the thing. Again, it's uh, maybe it's just part of the gaslighting. You know, like we don't know what really goes on and what's really who's being poisoned and who's not being poisoned. But it's pretty evident that they're using these nuclear poisons and these contaminants literally like you you know before the show you said something about i asked you what do you want to talk about and you said world war three oh, we'll i get to that I, I think we still are i think we're in world war three frankly i think it's going on right now and they just haven't told us we're on a need to know basis and we don't need to know yeah well i mean it's quite interesting. I mean, and and the, then the other thing was, is you know, the, something that just sort of popped into my head is that you know this this organophosphates um, yeah. uh, and the potash that, that that they're you know and all the all the sort of uh, materials that we're using for fertilizers and that, um, you know, it, 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 it you know, and the fact is, is that all this fertilizer is destroying the soil. Right. You know, so it was it up to seventy five percent of the soil is, is is under pressure of being ruined. Um, uh, the, I think there's a, certainly a large amount of the the, the 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 arable soil has been ruined because of uh, uh, factory farming, if you like, of um, you know the, the sort of big agricultural yeah. uh, sort of, yeah. uh, method and um, uh, using chemicals and that, as opposed to using organic stuff which revitalizes the soil. I mean, I find it very interesting with this conversation that uh, that Russia is one of the biggest exporters of organic food. They've really gone into organic food. They're not doing the kind of big agricultural thing, you know. I know China might be, but but uh, Russia has said no, nah, no, nah. and it just makes me think. Um, you know, what are if 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 these chemicals are doing that to uh, to um, shall we say um, uh, scripple. If they can do that sort of thing, and they can blow up big buildings in America, like with McVeigh did, then 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 why the hell are we using it? And if it's ruining the the soil, 
you know, why are we using it? Well, it's actually just a cheap, quick way of making food and it makes the profit bigger. You know, they don't have to hire more people. You know, and then we've got loads of people unemployed. You know, they could be working on farms, picking stuff, you know, and making a wage, you know, and, and feeling a bit good about themselves, you know, as opposed to, you know, sort of um, scrapping around trying to get, you know, from one week to the next to sort of make a living or, or you know, not at all. So, but anyway, that, that's beside the point, you know. Uh, I, I, I suppose... I, to, uh, I don't sort know of if say, it is beside the point, Sean. I think it's part of it. <laughs> yeah, I, think I mean, I think it's the fundamental the point of it all, right? Like, we're being poisoned, yeah. as Jerome calls us, we're the poisoned ones. This generation, yeah, yeah. we're the first generation that's realizing, like, oh, my gosh, it's bad. It's not, and it's really, like, it's not just one thing. It, there's a bunch of stuff. Sure. What have we been doing for the last seventy or eighty years? You know, you know. But we're it's seeing the denial. results in the soil. I, you know, yeah. this is why I'm grateful that you do nuclearnews.net and you write these articles. And I'm grateful mm. that you're willing to come on the show with me because it, this information is vital for people just to be aware of it. It doesn't mean we're expecting people to come up with solutions, but. I genuinely believe that the more we discuss this and make people aware of it, we will come to, I mean, I think our thoughts are things, so we can't really create a solution until we put our mind to it. Sure, sure. I mean, we've got the plastics and all the other issues as well, and, and they do kind of connect because it's just, yes. you, you know, you've got, you've got corporations trying to make money, and they make money by, you know, uh, doing what they're doing, and doing it as cheaply as possible with the biggest profit margin, you know. The money, uh, money so, Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's kind of, you know, and I would have said, in fact, you know, Russia is going to probably have some of the best soils and the best food, yeah. you know, in, yeah. in, 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 and there are other countries that, that also um, that, that like, you know, try to look after their soils, you know, uh, but, but it is, it's, you know, what's going to happen in the next 50 years. So, you know, never mind the climate or whatever, but, um, so I, what else? So there was, uh, yeah, I, I I thought, well, what what should I do? Because when when I got to that point of my research, I thought, right, well, okay, the UK's big thing is that only the uh, only the Russians could have made Novichok, right? And Theresa May said it was either the Russian government, it was Putin himself who brought the damn stuff, you know, went on a Sunday. To uh, to Salisbury, one of the most CCTV places on the planet, because there's there's loads of military stuff in and around the town. I mean, Porton Down, the biggest chemical warfare and biological and nuclear warfare place, is eight miles. Uh, for those in kilometres, that would be about fifteen kilometres away. You know, like a, a five mile drive or whatever, five minute, ten minute That's drive. Like nothing. nothing. Yeah, and uh, from their house. All right. Wow. So uh, and 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 there's ca there is cameras. You cannot walk around there without CCTV cameras looking after all the all the military buildings and keeping an eye on that whole whole town. In fact, and all the surrounding roads, you know. And anyway, but but so somebody's gone up to the door, smeared the door. Right, they've got neighbours and everything. But on a Sunday afternoon <laughs> or morning, you know, when there's nobody about, has gone drove in there. You know, um, you know, and the thing is, if it was, say, one of the diplomats that they sent off, they wouldn't have sent the diplomats off, would they? They'd have basically got the evidence, got the photo evidence of the guy who turned up and did the job. You know, this the, these these spy that did it, uh, the FSB trained FSB agent that did it. And he would be one of the diplomats that they sent to Russia. So it's not that they, because the diplomat would have immunity, uh, you'd have thought, uh, I mean, okay, maybe they sent somebody else, but they would have a picture of the guy. Do you know what I mean? And they'd have a registration of the car. So it's oh. it's just you know, things things don't seem to to gel with me on this one. But but anyway, what what do I know? So. Um, well, Basically. this is the thing. I get it because everything is suspicious. I mean, sure. we are totally getting it that we really don't. We can only put the pieces together. 
Uh-huh. But it doesn't mean that the story is incorrect or parts of... I think more likely it's parts of the story is correct, and that's what they're hanging on to. Like, they have shreds of the truth enwrapped around a whole pa- pack of lies to serve a political <laughs> oh, they're, they're, agenda. This gets so so deep. I mean, uh, what I did, I decided I'll bugger it. I'll, I'll, uh, now, I said, like, okay, so who would want to do this? Who would be really up for doing right, this? that was my question uh, And who would what, benefit the not, most? Yeah. <laughs> Who would seriously benefit? And I thought, well, who hates Russia Lockheed more than Martin. America and the UK? And, and you know, it had to be Ukraine. You know, it's either ISIS or Ukraine, right? It's one of those, the, one of those, the enemies of Russia, the, you know, the, the, you know, that kind of thing. You mean to set them uh, up and make it look like Russia did it? Possibly, possibly. So I, I, I thought, well, let's let's do that. So. Um, basically, I did, I've already mentioned that there's 300,000 uh, emigres from Russia, you know, um, and, and they're not all criminals. But I'm just saying that there's, there's there'd be a, a fair few there that wouldn't want to go back to Russia and they wouldn't like Putin because, they, they you know, he kicked them out or he might have even taken money off them and then kicked them out uh, in the case of Scripple. Um, if Scripple had any money, they, they, he would have had his money taken away and then he would have uh, been, you know, when he was exchanged back to the UK or to the UK, uh, he would have been living on a pension from uh, MI6, which probably wouldn't be maybe as much as he'd earned in the 10 years that, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, but I, I think at the end of the day, you know, that's number one. So you've got your local emigres in, in the UK and who don't like Putin and want to set him up. You've got Ukraine. And I thought, well, actually, I, I don't know a lot about the emigres and how many of them are dodgy and all this. So I just thought, well, let's let's look at Ukraine. You know, how would these emigres get this uh, this this stuff anyway? So uh, what I thought was, I'll, I'll, let's look at Ukraine. And I found that Ukraine, uh, there there is um, let's have a look. There is uh, if I might. Okay, I'm just going to go to my source notes here. So. Uh, all uh, right. Yeah. So there's basically in, in, there's, there's an actual company called LushburyFertilizer.com and uh, they can get muriate of posh, potash, um, uh, uh, ammonium sulfate um, and uh, uh, these sort of things, you know, and uh, the, we, they get products from Russia, Belarus and Ukraine. All right. So we, we, we've we kind of ruled out Russia because Russia would have the military grade stuff. That's what they're saying. Uh, we could say Belarus. But why, why would Belarus want to cause trouble between Russia and the UK? Because they're they're kind of uh, getting money from Russia and they're getting money from Europe, you know, from uh, from actually from London um, uh, and, you know, for the contamination in in. Uh, uh, and also because they want to, you know, the, both those those countries want to uh, get a foothold in Belarus. Um, and and uh, in the case of Europe, they want to do the same thing uh, in Belarus that happened in Ukraine. But the, in Belarus, they've got a dictator, so it's much more difficult. And he's playing one against the other, being a bit clever. So it didn't strike me that Belarus would be the place. But Ukraine, I mean, you know, OK. Um, and uh, I thought, well, OK, so... So we, it, it, it sounds like Ukraine might be one to look at. You know, if it wasn't Russia, it could be Ukraine. Um, so basically, I was looking at it and uh, where is it? Uh, yeah. So the next thing was, was OK, if it's Ukraine, then then I'll go off to the OSCE and see what they say about Ukraine and chemical safety and things. So there was a report done in 2017 uh, that found that in Ukraine there was really bad safety yeah. transport I and all this. I saw a uh, story about that. I was reading that when you called. Mishandling yeah. of spent nuclear fuel caused radioactivity in Russia. May have caused to spread across Europe. That one. Uh, well, no, actually, this this was actually to do specifically with chemicals. So we're talking about uh, you know uh, chemical weapons, or uh, not so much chemical weapons, but sort of chemicals that they use for a range of things, uh, which would include the things that you would need to make um, oh. this particular. Okay, stuff, I get it. I right? get it. Yeah. As opposed to the nuclear stuff, I'm, I'm not touching on that at the moment. Yeah. Um, 
but but we're talking about the chemical stuff and there's certainly issues in ukraine but but actually bologna and people like that are working in ukraine poisoning that they use this actual like this this is actually a chemical poisoning yeah yeah exactly so so uh, i looked at the osc and they they actually did a study in ukraine about uh, the laboratories um uh, transportation uh uh, border controls and things like this and they found that the border controls were bad the transportation was bad the laboratory security and safety was bad it had to be improved and they they drew up a three four year plan but it was three year plan basically to put all these things in place and the usa uh, and the EU uh, put the money, uh, were funding it, are funding it, are funding it, I should say, because it's, it's ongoing as we speak. So, um, and, and that's to get them in line with UNSCR 1540 of 2004, uh, which, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, they've, uh, they've basically contributed a lot of money to Ukraine uh, to do this. Of course, Ukraine's a really dodgy place at the moment you know it's very corrupt yeah there's, you know. yeah, there's a lot uh, going on there there's right there's war so, there's so, you know a lot of things that are not good and people doing a and lot the words of that they used they said in particular this decision aims at reducing the threat posed by the illicit trade of controlled and toxic chemicals in the osce region so they're saying that in ukraine they want to sort that problem out Um, And so in particular in Ukraine, thus promoting peace and security in the union's neighborhood. And and I got that from a European uh, legal uh, 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 website. So, Sean, we have about seven minutes left. I thought I'd just throw that in. Okay, well, I'll I'll just finish off then with this bit. And so uh, I I did mention, obviously, that um, uh, on the – I didn't mention, sorry. On the 13th of March 2018, um, well, about 10 days after the actual attack, that – what was his name? He was called – give me a second – Yeah, the Ukrainian foreign minister, Pavel Kimkin, said, the UK is investigating, of course. It will bring it, uh, sorry about the, because I had to translate it from uh, Ukrainian. Uh, The UK is investigating, of course. It will bring it until the end. (laughs) Forget that bit. It is already known that the poisoning was due to chemicals that were developed in Russia. We are in solidarity with Britain. If we need our, if if they need our help, expert or other, we will provide it the minister said to journalists on Tuesday in Kiev. That was the 13th of March. So uh, maybe it was actually a, a little bit before the 13th of March he said that. Um, so so basically, uh, that's, that, that's the point uh, anyway. Um, and I, I think, you know, when we look at that, uh, it was, I just thought that was quite interesting to find that because the, the Ukrainians have enough experience with it to be able to help the UK. And the UK has got port and down and with all the testing right. and everything else. But right. the Ukrainians and of course, why would they do that? Well, because the Ukraine uh, just before uh, Oper- Operation Desert Storm, the first Iraq war, uh, were, you know, a Ukrainian battalion, uh, an NBC battalion, uh, basically went to Kuwait to protect Kuwait and, uh, you know, from any chemical weapons. Right. And that was from uh, 2003, obviously. So so isn't that isn't that interesting? But anyway, there was one other story. There was one other story which is worth very quickly mentioning because we're, we're nearly there. Uh, there was uh, also and I, I, I think this is a bit disinfo myself. But anyway, there's a retired French uh, uh, officer. Uh, police, uh, sort of police security officer um, and he said that uh, he reckons he you know how Ale- Alexander Levenko was assassinated and he says that, that the t- Polonium 210 could only come from Russia but it was in fact actually smuggled out of Russia to some Chechens which are against Putin mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then came in through Italy and was, uh, was putting a glass vase and wrapped in paper which made it completely safe and then was uh, transported to the UK and blah, blah, blah. That's what he said. And then he was also talking about Scripple and he was really talking about all the dodgy buggers that are... Who was this that you're referring to? Uh, it's a guy called Paul Barrel. Officer, he was a French uh, uh, G I G N officer. Uh, Paul Barrel. And it, it's Paul, obviously, P-A-U-L, B A R I L L. And there's actually, um, there is actually a video online 
uh, it goes on for uh, um, it's an interview with him for 18 minutes now I, I, I'm not sure because he was saying that only the plutonium, um, plut- the polonium 210, could only come from uh, from the only place that, that that makes it is in Russia, uh, and of course we know that's not the case. You know, uh, we uh, we know that it can be made chemically. Uh, it can be, uh, you know, if, um, what that refers have- to. I think it doesn't. I think it says that it's the largest manufacturer of it or the largest. It well, the post- there, place sure, else. sure. But well, you only need a very small amount. And right. uh, as as Chris said, you know, if you've got uh, if you've got a bit of know how, and you've got some old radium tubes, you know, the things that you see on the internet, people yeah. show these glowy things and the radium dials and that. You can actually you could actually make but this uh, polonium. Is the insane part. See, this is where I always drive it back home to this: it's the nuclear denial. We cannot yeah. sustain this. This is just yeah. as insane. It's the it's it's part of the nuclear denial. Denying these chemical attacks. It mm. John Goffman said it's not just nuclear, it's the chemical and a nuclear all the technologists, if the technologists do not manage their waste adequately, certainly it will destroy our environment. And For sure, and also uh, coming back to World War Three, um, you know, when we've got all this bluster and what have you going on, and we've got uh, we've got air, we, we had an airplane that was stu- uh, that was uh, boarded uh, by the uh, by, by either the police or the security services, and they kicked they were trying to kick all the staff off. They locked the the, ca- the captain in the cabin, and then they were searching the plane for some reason. But and that's actually against international law. But um, Where was so basically, that? When did that, happen? that was that was in London, I think, uh, uh, Friday. Yeah, it would have wow. been Friday. So so and all these other things that are going on with all the expulsions and things like this, and you know, it only takes well, how long does it take to send the missiles flying? Just one little mistake. Just one little mistake. And it would be what half hour to forty minutes, and most of the cities um, where most of the people live would be flattened. Well, it doesn't you know? have to be all over the world. Do you think I don't? Well, think it it, would be all over the they world. were saying that if India and Pakistan um, threw, I think it was something ridiculous like uh, uh, twenty, something like ten or twenty missiles on major cities, which would create a huge dust amount of dust. Um, that would that be enough to really finish the planet off because wow. you'd just end up nuclear well, winter. I'm not happy. No, we've got about a minute and a half left, Sean. That, that is like unbelievable. Well, actually, well, funny you should say a minute and a half. That's about half the time a nuclear missile, you know, from a uh, would take to hit uh, hit me here in Ireland if they decided to send one up in uh, in the Atlantic. There, you know, minute and a half. From where? So by the by the time you actually stop this podcast and say goodbye to everyone. You know, I could be blown up by a nuclear weapon, uh, except for the fact that Ireland is a neutral country, of course. <laughs> so, uh, where would it be directed from? Uh, well, I don't know. They've got submarines, haven't they? So they can get pretty close. Yeah, no kidding. Well, look, thank you for joining us, Sean. You've been listening to Sean McGee of NuclearNews.net, editor. I strongly recommend that you follow that n- online newspaper regularly and please do contribute to their efforts they're extremely valuable thanks sean for joining us i hope you'll come back again will you i next month or so because uh this is a pretty late night interview for me so i apologize if i have sort of wandered off here and there but uh i have thoroughly enjoyed this interview thank you so much no good stuff make sure that you put novichok um, in the title of the uh, podcast, okay. <laughs> he might get a few more clicks. Definitely, <laughs> definitely will. And then, but but they they block the article anyway on Google, so you couldn't find the article on Google. Uh, wow. But so <laughs> well, maybe there you maybe go. It's, it's the Google job. monsters. Put your courage feet on, you guys. Take some action. We get to face this, and then we get to figure it out. So, um, I guess we'll talk with you soon. Take care. All right. Bye, Sean. Bye.